Hey folks, this is Deco here, and welcome to a video. So, as I kind of said in my post the other day, like there are just lots of things going on right now, and I just don't have the energy necessarily to hit the channel. I mean, I enjoy running the channel, it's great, but it just takes a lot of time, and there's so many things going on that I can't control, I just kind of want to hide with a blanket over my head and watch MST3K. But I did want to say hello. So, um, I don't know what's around here. Oh, we can plug my sponsors. Arbor Tea. Yay. Delicious. They have no idea that I pretend that I'm a sponsor. Well, they kind of do. So someone finally emailed them after I kept talking about them and uh, they sent me back an email that was polite but very confused. And I don't think that my reply email helped any. So yeah, but buy their stuff. It's delicious. Everything there is really good. Um, candy. If you don't like those, I still have time to build a gallus. Uh, pens. The Zebra 701. Best pen ever made. Solid. Nice knurling on it. It's the pen of champions. Um, I have a stapler. See, this is what happens when I don't have, like, something specific to do on screen. It's just like, what crap do I have laying around here? So, I have an idea. I'm going to read you guys some classic literature. That way the channel's sophistication will go way up or something. So I'd love to read the first couple pages of the Iliad. I love this book. Rage. Goddess, sing the rage of Peleus' son Achilles. Murderous, doomed, that cost the Achaeans countless losses, hurling down to the house of death so many sturdy souls, great fighter souls, but made their bodies carrion and feast for the dogs and birds. And the will of Zeus was moving toward its end. Begin, Muse, when the two first broke and clashed, Agamemnon, lord of men, and brilliant Achilles. What god drove them to fight with such a fury? Apollo, the son of Zeus and Leto, Incensed at the king, he swept a fatal plague through the army. Men were dying, and all because Agamemnon spurned Apollo's priest. Yes, Chryses approached the Achaeans' fast ships to win his daughter back, bringing a priceless ransom and bearing high in hand, wound on a golden staff, the wreaths of the god, the distant deadly archer. He begged the whole Achaean army, but most of all the two supreme commanders, Atreus's two sons. Agamemnon, Menelaus, all Argives geared for war. May the gods who hold the halls of Olympus give you Priam city to plunder, and then safe passage home. Just set my daughter free, my dear one. Here, accept these gifts, this ransom. Honor the god who strikes from worlds away, the son of Zeus, Apollo. And all the ranks of Achaeans cried out their assent. Respect the priest, accept the shining ransom. But it brought no joy to the heart of Agamemnon. The king dismissed the priest with a brutal order ringing in his ears. Never again, old man, let me catch you in sight by the hollow ships. Not loitering now, not slinking back tomorrow. The staff and the wreaths of God will not save you then. The girl, I won't give up the girl. Long before that, old age will overtake her in my house in Argos, far from her fatherland, slaving back and forth with the loom, forced to share my bed. Now go, don't tempt my wrath and you may depart alive. The old man was terrified. He obeyed the order, turning, trailing away in silence down the shore where the battle lines of breakers clash and drag. And moving off to a safe distance, over and over the old priest prayed to the son of sleek-haired Leto, the Lord Apollo, Hear me, Apollo, god of the silver bow, who strides the walls of Chrysi and Cilia Sancrosact, lord in the power of Tantos, god of the plague. If I ever roofed a shrine to please your heart, ever burn the long rich bones of bulls and goats on your holy altar, now bring my prayers to pass. Pay the Danans back, your arrows for my tears. His prayer went up and Phoebus Apollo heard him. Down he strode from Olympus's peaks, storming at heart, with his bow and hooded quiver slung across his shoulders. The arrows clanged at his back as the god quaked with rage, the god himself on the march, and down he came like night. Over against the ships he dropped to a knee, let fly a shaft, and a terrifying clang rang out from the great silver bow. First he went for the mules and circling dogs, but then, launching a piercing shaft at the men themselves, he cut them down in droves, and the corpse fires burned on, day and night, no end in sight. Nine days the arrows of God swept through the army, and on the tenth Achilles called all ranks to muster. The impulse seized him, sent by wide-armed Hera, grieving to see the Achaean fighters drop and die. 
Once they'd gathered, crowding the meeting grounds, the swift runner Achilles rose and spoke among them. Son of Atreus, we are beaten back, I fear. The long campaign is lost. So, home we shall sail, if we can escape our death, if war and plague are joining forces now to crush the Argives. But wait, let us question a holy man, a prophet, even a man skilled with dreams. Dreams as well can come our way from Zeus. Come, someone to tell us why Apollo rages so, whether he blames us for a vow we failed or sacrifice. If only the god would share the smoky savor of lambs and full-grown goats, Apollo might be willing, still, somehow, to save us from this plague. And so he proposed, and sat down again as Calchas rose amongst them, Thestra's son, the clearest by far of the seers who can see the flight of birds. He knew all things that are, all things that are past, and all that are to come the seer who had led the Argive ships to Troy with the second sight that the god Apollo gave him. For the army's good, the seer began to speak, Achilles, dear to Zeus, you order me to explain Apollo's anger, the distant deadly archer? I'll tell it all, but strike a pact with me, swear you will defend me with all your heart, with words and strength of hand, for there is a man I will enrage, I see it now, a powerful man who lords it over all the Argives, one the Achaeans must obey. A mighty king, raging against an inferior, is too strong. Even if he can swallow down his wrath today, still he will nurse the burning in his chest, until sooner or later he sends it bursting forth. Consider it closely, Achilles. Will you save me? And the matchless runner assured him, Courage! Out with it now, Calchas. Reveal the will of God, whatever it is you may know. And I swear by Apollo, dear to Zeus, the power you pray to, Calchas, that when you reveal God's will to the Argives, no one, not while I'm alive and see the light on earth, no one shall lay his heavy hands on you by the hollow ships, none amongst the armies, not even if you mean Agamemnon here, who claims to be by far the best of the Argives. The seer took heart, and this time he spoke out bravely, beware, he cast no blame for a vow we failed, a sacrifice. The gods enraged because Agamemnon spurned his priest. He refused to free his daughter, he refused the ransom. That's why the archer sends us pains and will send us more, and will never drive this shameful destruction from the Argives, not till we give the daughter with sparkling eyes to her loving father. No price, no ransom paid, and carry a hundred sacred bulls to Chrysotown. Then we can calm the god, and only then appease him. So he declared and sat down. But amongst them rose the fighting son of Atreus, lord of the far-flung kingdoms, Agamemnon, furious, his dark heart filled to the brim. Blazing with anger now, his eyes like searing fire, and with a sudden killing look he wheeled on Calchas first. Seer of misery, never a word that works to my advantage. Always misery warms your heart, your prophecies. Never a word of prophet said or brought to pass. Now again, you divine God's will for the Archimedes. Brewed about, in fact, why the deadly archer multiplies our pains, because I, I refuse that glittering price for the young girl Crasis. Indeed, I prefer her by far the girl herself, and I want her mine in my own house. I rank her higher than Clamenestra, my wedded wife. She's nothing less in build or breeding, in mind or works of hand, but I'm willing to give her back, even so, if that's what's best of all. What I really want is to keep my people safe, not to see them dying. But fetch me another prize and straight off too, else I alone of the Argives go without my honor. That would be a disgrace. You are all witness. Look, my prize is snatched away. But the swift runner Achilles answered him at once, Just how, Agamemnon, great field marshal, most grasping man alive, how can the generous Argives give you prizes now? I know of no troves of treasure, piled, lying idle anywhere. Whatever we dragged from towns we plundered, all's been portioned out. But collect it? Call it back from the rank and file? That would be the disgrace. So return the girl to the god, at least for now. We Achaeans will pay you back three, four times over if Zeus will grant us the gift somehow, someday, to raise Troy's massive ramparts to the ground. I should actually do this. Deco reads you the classics. This is fun. It's just kind of hard on my throat. And hopefully <laughs> uh, little jump cuts around my stutter didn't get too annoying. So yeah, this video started when I was talking about a bicycle and ends with an argument between Achilles and Agamemnon. And so, on that note, thanks for watching. See you soon.